Welcome back to the Northern Lights franchise here on State of the Franchise Gaming. We are still leading the AL East. Where we take on the very tough Chicago White Sox to play in a pretty weak division, but we can't take anybody lightly at this point this season. We are literally a singular day away from the draft and there is the 2019 AL batting chance, Tim Anderson. Right. We have Hunjin Ryu making a start. Remember, he was injured last week, but he did come back fairly quickly. So hopefully he can come back to us and unfortunately gives up a hit in the very first batter. But it's completely understandable when it's the AL batting champ. Right, curveball in the dirt. Danny Jansen is going to scoop it up. Fire the second. Biggio, without a doubt, is going to throw him out. Go to the very next batter, and Hunjin Ryu looking a little sloppy here, giving up two hits in the first. He hasn't given up a run, but that might be because Danny Jansen saved his ass. Here's Luis Robert. He's batting pretty well, 308. Runner at first is going. Jansen throws to second, and damn, he is really showing off his arm today. Whether it's a wild pitch, or he's able to get that pop time going. He is throwing out his second batter of the ball game. Robert Ace in the AL in batting average. He's going to put one deep to center, but Springer is going to have it as the ballpark confines it. And we push forward. Okay. Bobachet leading off, and he's going to chop this to Tim Anderson. Oh, unfortunately, he throws off the line, and we get a three-base run. Not a Anderson, more known for his bat than his fielding. Not that he's terrible at it, but, you know, it happens from time to time. They're a little overzealous on the field first. Ooh. Speaking of overzealous, dude, that slide is disgusting. That is third. Take a look base. at the pitching sequence. He went 12 6, 4 C, 4 C, and another 4 C in the high and inside. Vlad Guerrero up next, leading the Blue Jays in home runs. And I think Dylan Cease does not like that. I don't think he wanted to really pitch to him. So, Danny Jensen, who threw out two batters, can he give us a run after saving some in the beginning of the first? And, ooh, that is a wild pitch. Oh, my goodness, dude. Jensen, who are you looking at? Nonetheless, the passed ball gives Jensen another opportunity, but he is not going to be able to capitalize slider away. You can see he throws that slider in. It ranges anywhere from an 81 to an 86 mile an hour pitch. So it'll really throw a batter off. And he's also got that nice fastball to get the next batter. Destroying two runners in scoring position. Go to the top of the second eight former AL MVP Jose Abreu is going to get the White Sox a runner in scoring position as this ball is hit to left center. Topper throws it back in. The White Sox are in business. That is it. Andrew Vaughn up next. He plays there. He plays left field and. Unfortunately, he can't advance and bring you any further. I'm surprised he's at 41 speed. He was only the slower than that. Nonetheless, Gerdman Mercedes, or Mercedes is unfortunately going to end this inning in what I believe is his first at bat of the season. He's not getting a lot of the burn on him. Flashed. Lourdes. Is Lourdes Gurriel Jr. 202 average not hitting that well? Granted, when he does put bat on ball, he's doing something like this. Deep drive to left field, giving him home run number 11 on the season. Take a look at that again, and that slider floated right into his wheelhouse, baby. We're gonna need a lot more of that. If we're going to be World Series contenders, but we got to take it one game at a time, man. 433 feet off the bat. I ain't out a slash and it says meters. We're in Canada, damn it. Anyways, Adam Engel is going to strike out. And you Ryu. That was only his first strikeout. As a matter of fact, he had two in total. Not getting guys out. 
And Dylan Cease is trying to wipe us off the face of the earth by hitting all our batters. Because here comes the first guy he hit, Vlad Guerrero Jr. And he's going to hit this one deep to left, ranging back, looking up. It is going to be a corner. A little payback for the earlier hit by pitch, by hitting that pitch a, a meter, a couple hundred meters away. 361 feet, only 93 miles an hour. That, but that is okay if counts nonetheless. Again, we're not hitting well, but I really feel like our pitcher was doing us a damn good save. Yeah, damn good job of keeping us in games. Jensen, oh. All right. Playing well defensively, just maybe not so much. Offensively, improved. Springer follows suit by striking out. Ryu is in a bit of trouble. Runners at each corner for Abreu. Chopper to Biggio to Bichette. Coming second over the first. And he is able to get out of danger. Pitching the contact. Adam Engel with a runner in scoring position with two away. And it's going to be a pop-up between home and third in foul territory. Jensen's going to make the catch in 3-5. We continue to maintain a 3 nothing lead. Here's... Tim Anderson again. Guys are not getting runs. They're getting hits. And this ball's hit the center just out of the reach of George Springer. He will retrieve it and throw it back in. And with nobody out, the White Sox have an opportunity to get a run. Yeah, Who better to do it than a spark plug like Tim Anderson? Chopper to Bichette. Anderson retreats back to second, and Guerrero's going to throw it to third. Dude, what are you thinking? You're not playing Diamond Dynasty. You don't have to worry about people running the bases like jackasses here. And unfortunately, that is going to be an error charge to him. Robert. Chopper to Biggio, and that is going to score a run. Unfortunately, we able to get the out, but uh, Guerrero with a little bit of lackadaisical fielding. Jimenez is going to strike out. Unfortunately, as all of the that the White Sox are going to get at this point. We're going to call on Rod Strickland. I don't want to wear out Ryu. You know, I could have pitched him in the seventh, but let other guys get some burn. And Strickland, ooh, he's going to go up a deep shot to center. Springer ain't even moving. He is rooted to the grass. As the 2020 AL MVP. Gets them within one. Just because he's aging doesn't mean he can't still do his damn job. His job is to hit the drive-in runs. One of the few players to have back-to-back you know, -back 100 RBI seasons in today's baseball. You would think with all the home runs, we'd have a lot more guys to do it. But I don't know who this was that hit it, but it is going to be between Springer and Hernandez. Hernandez kind of stumbles getting to the ball, but he's able to retrieve it. And German Mercedes the third base is a runner in scoring position with two outs. Engel strikes out, unfortunately. Remember, he's only hitting like 130 with runners in scoring position. Maybe they should have subbed him out. Stripling, a little pissed off at himself for giving up the home run, but way to recover. Right. We're going to sit Merriweather down and just have Romano in the bullpen here at the, top, the bottom of the eighth. Oh. Yeah, and we're going to call his number. He is perfect in save opportunities. 17 for 17 with 1.5 ERA. Lefties and righties both hitting under 200 as he looks to make an all-star game. But, oh, the two-seamer over the plate. Tapia, stop running. You don't have to chase it. He has blown the save. And this game is tied. I did not expect that from him. And I don't think he expected that from himself. As the White Sox, the momentum is clearly, clearly in their dugout. Can they take the lead? Can they close it out in the bottom of the night? 97 miles an hour. That two seamer cut way back over the plate. So Brady, who's already hit a long ball, is going to smoke this one to the left. Tapia reaches out and can't get it. It bounces up the wall, up against the wall. Throw in the cutoff. And, oh, 
The shit almost threw it away from Vigio. Bray with his seventh double. And Romano's going to have to try to get himself out of danger with a run in scoring position. And nobody out. Ooh. Slider. In the dirt. Jensen throws it. Oh, my goodness. That is the third batter he's thrown out today. He, ooh, he definitely saved the run. As Vaughn hits this to center, unfortunately, because Jensen struck it on, this is not a sacrifice fly situation. Two outs. Now that Kepler, Yerman. Yerman Mercedes. I'm surprised they didn't call on Grandal as the slider is inside, but chop over the first as Guerrero will step on the bag with the final out. All right, we go to the bottom of the ninth. Can we? Get a walk-off win. Springer, sinker, chopper to the left-hand side of the pitcher toss to Abreu, and he is out of here. Gurriel. Wish he'd been a little bit more patient in that at bat. Guriel, does he got it? He's already hit a home run earlier. He is down 0-2 to Kendall Graven as they try to get this to the top of the 10th. It's a chopper to Anderson, and unfortunately, Guriel's going to sit down. Now batting. Right a little disappointed in himself, and understandably so. To Oscar Hernandez. 0 oh, 2. Sinker hit up the middle. And oh, second baseman's able to throw it on the out. And we are going to go to extras. Remember, we do have the extra inning. The Manfred Rule Runner, whatever the hell you want to call it, is in effect. They have 10 hits, but only able to muster three runs. That's complete. We'll call on Yuli Garcia from the bullpen. We are 0-2 in extra innings games this far. Fly ball to Springer, and he's going to throw it. And it has been off the line for Chapman, and they have a runner in scoring position with only one out. The right field. Again, that stayed we are 0-2 in extra innings games, and we're going to call for a really, really odd defensive shift. Gonna Shift everybody left and move the shortstop in so that anything hit on that side is not going to automatically get them a run. Adam Engel, probably the perfect guy to do this against. He falls behind 0-1. He is batting 133 with runners in scoring position. He really just needs to hit it to the right-hand side, but he's a pull hitter. Slurred in there right down the middle. If he'd hit that just a tad bit late, might have went the first. Might have got him a run. We don't have the... Guerrero hugging the line. Fastball too low. It is now one and two. Pitch high. Fastball and he gets him out. Engel has struck out three times to a high fastball with runners in scoring position. Maybe we should have went to A.J. Pollock. I don't know. All right. Do a little funkiness with the defensive shifts too because I don't trust the A.I. And we'll shift them to the left. And more so the corner end than anything, as there are two outs. And, ooh, slurry. Right over the middle, but down. Tim Anderson, a former batting champ. 335 in 2019. Can he get a good hit? No. He's going to get a pretty iffy call there, though, for strike number two. Anderson not hitting well as well. But runners in scoring position, 158. Garcia, circle change, good pitch, just misses the inside corner. Garcia, slur, slider actually, is going to be fouled off as Anderson's really trying to fight to give his team the lead, but he can't hold on any further strikeout on the high heater. As we've got a chance to walk this game off for the second inning in a row. He doing the damn thing. Your attention, please. They're going to call on Aaron now Bummer. He is 0-1 in save situations. He is not Aaron considered Aaron. this team's closer. Bummer. Righties are hitting 375, but lefties are who he is having his way with. 160 average. As what do you know? Here's a lefty. Right on top of it. Runner at second due to the Manfred rule. Five we just need to move him over, honestly. Yeah, ooh, swing and a miss and a pitch in the dirt, and the runner at second is going to retreat as it doesn't roll all the way far enough. Liam Hendricks is in the bullpen. He's a lefty, and he is their closer. 
And Slider is going to get hit up the middle. I don't remember who their second baseman is, but it's not going to matter as the runner will advance to third with one away. I'm going to presume that means the defense is going to play in. The infield, the outfield. Because honestly, a sack fly would cause a run. Here's Matt Chapman. Ooh, sorry, I kicked my desk. He is not having a good game. 0 for 3. If he dropped down a point, he might be able to get it, but he's not a punter. Cutter. Below the knees. This is a very clutch situation. Mets defeat the Nationals. DeGrom goes eight and two thirds. Ooh, sinker. Ooh, right in his wheelhouse. I think he was really trying to pull that one. Somehow he fouled it off the other way. And sinker way outside. I get what he was trying to do, but I don't think he should be trying to force the Chapman to hit it to his right side. Oh, sinker. Fouled off. The other way, he is just fouling his pitches off and he's down 2-2. Two -two. Honestly, just put some contact on the ball. Bro. I'm not asking for a long ball. 2-2. Two -two. Oh, deep shot, but it is hooked well foul. He got out in front of it. Come on, Chappie. Oh, sinker on the outside corner. Fouls it off to the right-hand side. AL batting leaders, Trout, Brantley, Grossman, France, and Ramon Urias. Oh, sinker right down the middle. Dude, just hit it back up the middle. That's all we ask. Oh, working on his eighth pitch, so he is seeing a lot of pitches in his senior strategy from Aaron Bummer. Pitch. Oh, this slider is hit deep to left. Blue Jays win. Jays get their first victory in extra innings this season. Hopefully they don't have to go too many more of these. Especially when they're giving up 10 hits. Jeez. Nonetheless, the boys will crowd him at the home plate. Showing him love. As we pick up our 34th victory of the season and we continue to lead the American League East. That slider did not have enough juice on it. And bam, Chapman does damage. You can move the infield in, but the outfield is not standing in the stands. And when it lands, we win. All right, we're going to take a look at the very next game right before the draft. The draft got literally going on as this is happening. Guriel, his worst batting average in the first five games of a season in his career. Let's see if we can rectify that. We are up 2 nothing. Offense seems to have traveled over into this game. Chopper up to middle, up to second. And Guria, ooh, almost beats it out on a high throw. Right. Jonathan India wins May Rookie of the Month, and a Rookie of the Month, as he was last year's Rookie of the Year in the National League. And this one's going to hit the right. It's going to bounce in front of the right fielder. And he is going to get himself a single. Garrett Cole leading, leading strikeouts. Uh, we don't play the Yankees for a little bit. Chopper to short over the second, and that is going to be a As a matter of fact, we play the Yankees the 17th through the 19th on a weekend series at home. But we don't care about that. We care about this. And ooh, slider breaking him off at the knees. He is out despite there being a runner in scoring position. Another opportunity. We're up by eight. We don't need a long ball. Just, 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 just get a solid AB, brother. I'm not asking for a lot. 2-2. Two, two. And the sinker, he gets a little bit too much underneath it. It's going to be hit the center. Unfortunately, he is going for three today. But we are leading 12 hits and nine runs. Five hits for them, one run. And we win 9-2 by that same score. This episode is not exactly done yet. We do have the draft. I know there's like a minute left in this, but I will actually just show y'all that tomorrow. We have nine total draft picks, one in each of the normal rounds, 
believe we have one in the competitive balance A round. We got yeah, one in the second, two in the compensatory round, and one in the competitive balance round B. So we have nine picks. Now remember, our our farm system is depleted. We really need to hit on a lot of these guys, even if it's for nothing more than to be trade bait. All right, those are the first picks, and I'll show you everything in the next episode. Peace.